Hey guys, Kevin Tokoff here. Uh, obviously, we've got a movement at science exam tomorrow on Friday, and they're going to be testing us heavily over gait, I think. And we've got a lot of stuff here with gait to learn. We've got all the muscles that are active. We've got range of motions. We've got, you know, whether something is eccentric contraction, concentric, isometric. And then we've got these induced torques here. And I don't know about you guys, but the way I see it is since we've got all this stuff to learn, uh, if I can minimize the amount of work that I have to do and get the most out of that learning, the most out of the exam, I'd like to do that. So I thought about typing this into the, into Facebook and whatnot, and I felt like typing it would actually make it more confusing. So I thought I'd just record a short video over um, what my thinking is and how you can predict the induced torques given the range of motions that you have here. Okay. Um, this table was uploaded on the Facebook group. Um, this one was, and this one was as well. And so for this table, remember, we've got the five joints here. We've got the eight stages of the gait cycle, and then we've got the particular angles or the range of motion of the joint. And for these first two, hip and knee, all of them are in some degree of flexion, except for these two right here, the 20 and 10 degrees of the hip, which is for terminal stance and pre-swing. Those are extension. Uh, for the ankle, um, unless it's with a zero, all of these are in plantar flexion, except for these two, five and ten, which are in dorsiflexion. And we really won't be referencing the uh, MTP joints much here, but they're both extension. And so, long story short, before I show you how it works, basically we're going to use these joint angles right here, and whether or not it's flexion or extension and so forth, to predict the induced torques. Um, and it's going to work for the vast majority of them. There's a couple of exceptions, but I'll note those. All right, so that implies you kind of have to have these more or less memorized. So I'm zoomed in on that comprehensive table, and I've got some arrows here that are going to show my line of thinking. I will say for the first one in the hip, it really doesn't help much, but once you're at the loading response, um, then it's very predictive. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, between two phases, we're going to be looking at the degrees and whether it's in flexion or extension relative to the next one. And we can actually use that to predict the torque. So for example, right here we're in 20 degrees of hip flexion. So we're going from 20 of flexion to zero or neutral. Well, we're reducing the amount of flexion, right, to get from 20 degrees to zero. So what's a couple of ways we could decrease the flexion? Well, we could either just straight up decrease the flexion torque, or we could have an extension torque. So if I'm in 20 degrees of hip flexion and I throw in some extension, that's going to bring me back to zero. Now here I'm at zero. How do I get to 20 degrees of hip extension? Well, I could just throw in an extension torque. So zero plus some extension torque is going to get me to 20 degrees of hip extension. Going further right here, I'm in 20 degrees of hip extension. How do I get to 10 degrees of hip extension? Well, I could simply decrease the extension torque, right? Because if I decrease the extension torque, I'm going to have less extension, so 20 to 10. Then from here, I have 10 degrees of hip extension, and then I'm now going to 15 degrees of hip flexion, so I'm still decreasing the extension, going in the opposite direction, so I can decrease the extension torque. That'll take me more to flexion. Here, I've got 15 degrees of hip flexion. How do I get to 25 degrees? Well, that's more hip flexion, so I have to throw in a flexion torque. So 15 degrees of hip flexion plus a flexion torque gives me more hip flexion. And then here, 25 degrees of hip flexion down to 20 degrees of hip flexion. Well, I can just decrease the flexion torque. Okay? So if I decrease the flexion torque, I'm going to have less hip flexion. Okay? And so I'm just using each of these range of motions, the initial one to the next one, to really predict what's happening with the induced torques. We can go to the knee joint and play the same game. So here I start with 5 degrees of knee flexion. How do I get from 5 degrees to 15 degrees of knee flexion? Well, I have to add more flexion torque. So more flexion torque is going to take me from 5 to 15. Now here I'm going to do 15 degrees down to 5 degrees of knee flexion. Well, then I could throw in an extension torque to get that. So again, 15 degrees of knee flexion, you can reduce the knee flexion by adding an extension torque, since extension is the opposite. Now right here it really doesn't work very well, uh, but if you at least know that these are pretty much the same, the same things going on in both of these, um, other than that, it really doesn't work here. That's the second place it doesn't work. But once we go past that, it continues the same pattern. 
five degrees of knee flexion to 40 degrees, well, I have to throw in a flexion torque to get to that 40. Throwing in a flexion torque gives me more knee flexion, five to 40. 40 degrees of knee flexion to 60 degrees of knee flexion, well, I would probably throw in some more flexion torque. So more flexion torque onto 40 degrees gives me 60 degrees. 60 degrees of knee flexion down to 25 degrees. Um, in the PowerPoints, it kind of said that it was starting as flexion and then went to extension. So throw in an extension torque, that's going to reduce the knee flexion down to 25. And then here, 25 degrees of knee flexion down to 5 degrees of knee flexion. Well, throw in an extension torque and that'll reduce the amount of flexion down to 5. We can do the same thing here for the ankle joint except now we're dealing with plantar flexion versus dorsiflexion. So start here at zero degrees, neutral. How do I get from zero to five degrees of plantar flexion? Well, throw in a plantar flexion torque. It gives me five degrees of plantar flexion. I've got five degrees of plantar flexion. Now I want to go in the opposite direction to five degrees of dorsiflexion, so I have to throw in a dorsiflexion torque, right? I'm at 5 degrees of dorsiflexion. How do I get to 10 degrees of dorsiflexion? I have to add more dorsiflexion, so more dorsiflexion torque. So I'm at 10 degrees of dorsiflexion. How do I get to 15 degrees of plantar flexion? Well, I can decrease the dorsiflexion torque right here. Okay? Again, you could either have a plantar flexion torque or decrease the dorsiflexion torque, and that's going to take me in the opposite direction to plantar flexion. Okay, now pretty much at this point, these don't really work very well, and the reason that I've kind of come up with, with why it kind of stops here is because when you get to the ankle joint at initial swing, really initial swing and mid-swing, the pretibials, which are the muscles that are active there, are undergoing concentric contraction. Um, I found that this pretty much works for eccentric and isometric, so if you know the, con the contraction is concentric, it really doesn't work there. Okay. Now, obviously, I had the torques written on this table, but if I didn't have that, I could still do the same thing. I just need to remember what's flexion and extension. So, for example, if I want to zoom in, let's look here at the knee joint. Start at 5 degrees of flexion. How do I get to more flexion? 15 degrees, I would have to have a flexion torque here. If I'm going from 15 degrees of flexion to 5 degrees of flexion, I'm reducing the flexion, so I could have an extension torque. And again, that's exactly what we had here. So again, just maybe a helpful thing if that made sense to you. Um, so hopefully it helps you guys uh, learn the stuff. It certainly helped me. Again, there's only a couple places on here where it really doesn't work. Um, just at the beginning of the hip joint and then right here in uh, the knee joint where these two mid stance and terminal stance are very, very similar, if not the same. Okay. Wish everyone the best of luck tomorrow.